picture on our agenda of the uh, Friends of Christopher Columbus Park, of which I'm a member, uh, have a project that they'd like to uh, get some funding for, and uh, Julian H. Ryan, who's their president, is going to present it to us. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you all for having me here. I see some faces that I know that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, as Jim said, I'm the president of the Friends of Christopher Columbus Park. And I'm sure you've all heard of it, but let me just tell you a little bit about it, things you may not know. The organization is, uh, 11, this is in its 12th year. We now have about 300 paid members, and those are folks from the waterfront and the North End. Uh, out of the 300 paid members, we have an active membership and by that I mean these are the folks who work in the Rose Garden on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings. They work on the casino night fundraiser that we just had. Uh, and some of you were there for that. It was a great night. Uh, then we do Columbus Day event for kids. This year for the first time we did Fourth of July, which was fabulous. We had Uncle Sam on stilts. And we did a parade through the park, which we've done at the other events. Now you all know how little that park is. So the parade takes about six and a half minutes. But we walk slowly because they're little children. And um, we have a, you know, a little bit of musical accompaniment. And there are a few hundred people who are in this little parade. Well, when we had Uncle Sam this year, they, and it was the first time, he couldn't walk on the grass. So we're walking down Atlantic Avenue to come around. And here he comes in front of us, and I've got my twin four and a half year old grandsons, one on each hand, and there Uncle Sam is, and he puts his legs like this and the little kids walk right through his legs. <laughs> so it was just uh, the cutest event. Uh, we did a picnic in the park this year. Uh, we have another, it's a combination of a little fundraiser and it's also a, um, a good society community event. A, um, a cocktail sunset cruise on the harbor in July. And we've done that for two years. The boat is donated to us by Boston's Best Cruises, which are the ones who leave from the ferry and they go to the Harbor Islands. Uh, so we've done that two years. And the money we've raised from that has been able to pay for the Columbus Day event. So over the years, the organization grows. Michelle Brogan is one of our uh, uh, members, as is, of course, Robin Reed. Jonathan. So, We've got a really good community and it's growing. Well, one thing that happened, and when the park was renovated in 2001 was when the park, the Friends Group was founded. And at the time it was uh, some people in the neighborhood, Ann Devlin, I think you know her, um, Victor Rovner was one of the founding members, and, and then businesses, Tia's and Joe's American Bar and Grill. And the idea was that those businesses were to contribute money every year to the Friends organization for different things that needed to happen in the park. And that has happened all these years. But when they redid the park, and for those of you who were here at the time, if you remember, the three trellises didn't go in a straight line. They went one, two, and the third one went towards the Marriott. So that was one of the things they did, was align the trellises. And then they made this big, <coughs> huge walkway. And I'm going to just pass out the pictures. So when they made this big, huge walkway, it was all stamped. Uh, it was supposed to be brick, of course, but you know how budgets get diminished. So it's stamped asphalt. And the Friends group looked at this as they were starting to work on it, and it said it looked like a parking lot. So could we put something there? So the city's solution was to cut a big circle and to put in three trees and put in some perennials, but by then it was too late and there was no water going to it. <coughs> so this gives you an idea of what it looks like from, and I'm sure you all know it, but it's just this big thin <coughs> area, this circle. So we came up with the idea, and I'm sure you probably all agree with me, the park is stunningly beautiful. Uh, we're all very proud of it. We're also the ones who raise the money, our fundraiser, our our uh, major expense is on the blue lights on the trellis and the 14 trees that are lit throughout the park every year. That costs us about $30,000. Um, but we wanted to do something in a circle. So we applied to the um, Boston Committee of the Garden Clubs of America has a blossom fund. And they had a $50,000 grant that was available. So with the help of one of our members, who was a grant writer, because I've never done anything like that in my life, we put together this grant, which is a torturous process for all those who have ever uh, heard that it's torturous <laughs> to do grants, it's exactly right. Um, so we put that together, and 
As it turned out, we did not get the grant. It went to the Northern Avenue Bridge. So this spring, you'll see that that's got some nice things that happen to it. But they made an extra grant of $10,000 for us for the circle project. That's great. But the budget for the circle project, I can back up a little bit. How do you start to do something like this? We don't know how to do this. So we went and talked to Tony Pollock of the Parks Department, talked to Liza Meyer, who's the Chief Landscape Architect. Tony is behind the project 100%. Um, and then Liza has helped us work with what do we do with this thing? Because right now, that circle is on the walkway from the pavilion on the Greenway, right through to the Harbor Ferries, you come out of the Marriott, you go into the North End, so it's right at the crossroads of the park. And everybody is in the park pretty much, unless they're on the grass with the dogs. They're going right past that nondescript, arid, ugly little circle. So the idea is, and we got, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but the Parks Department, our uh, the landscape architect, came up with, we could at least triple the size of that circle and it would no longer be a circle. It would be some, maybe kidney-shaped, maybe just kind of a free-flowing, free-form kind of thing that you could walk around, you could walk through, have benches in it. <clears throat> so we envision it to be as spectacular as the rest of the park. But that $10,000 is a drop in the bucket. Uh, the estimate that we came up with based on uh, the city's uh, input, uh, talking to the landscaper, it's about $70,000. So that includes the design, uh, irrigating it, which is not a big expense. Then you're going to have the bricks around it, whatever the stone is, whatever the foliage is. Benches, they're going to be a very important part of it. I envision myself a small benches, so it's not some big, long thing, but small, cozy little benches that people can come. And this is a going to be like a a serene little spot right in the middle of the park. It's impossible to tell you exactly what it looks like because we haven't designed it yet. We got the $10,000 from the Blossom Fund, which was huge. I mean, to 100% batting average for our first grant, our only grants ever is pretty good. Um, so then we applied to Beautify Boston at Tony Pollock's uh, suggestion, which is a $275,000 program that the city has to give out grants to different parks and areas and things that would beautify the city. <coughs> and I believe the smallest grant is 5000 and the largest is 25000 So we applied for that for $25,000. And this was the cover of the brochure that I put together, the booklet that I put together. So we call it the Crossroads Circle, Crossroads Circle Project. Um, and again, I can't tell you what it would look like, but I can give you the sense of what we, the feeling that we're trying to accomplish. <coughs> this was something that we had designed for the Blossom Fund when we had that. I'm sorry, I'm not only going to look at the back of it. So we show here the pictures, for those who can see it, the pictures of what it looks like now. And it's dry and non-irrigated and um, and of course, when we did the proposal, we used the ugliest pictures we had. Um, and they were black and white, so it made it look even uglier. Um, and it, it's just not attractive. I mean, people walk by it. They don't even notice it. When I was trying to get letters of support and from Tom Powers of the Boston Harbor um, Islands, and, I, and he must walk past this thing I don't know how many times on the way to the ferry. I had to say to Tom, think about it. You've left the pavilion, you walk it to the ferry. You know that circle thing? Oh, oh, yeah, that thing. So people don't even know that it's there. But what we want to go is from that feeling of something that you just walk around to an engaging, beautiful, lush area, and but not with that trees that high or anything like that because it won't be <coughs> use. And where the kids are, are comfortable and people are comfortable sitting. So it's a feeling we're trying to create. and. Um, to make, make it as beautiful as the rest of the park. So the city of Boston will announce um, by the end of the month if we'll get the $25,000. That would take us up to 35. The friends have committed another 15. And then we'll have a capital uh, project to raise uh, about another 25 to $30,000. Um, if we get this, it would, we just have to hit the ground running, get designs, get commitments work with the city, 
um, I would, the city, the $25,000, we get that project has to be done by the end of the year. Well, that doesn't mean we have to have the benches. That doesn't mean we have to have all the flowers. That doesn't, but the basic, the water, the basic design, the basics would be done by the end of the year. So it's a really exciting project. Um, considering what we do with the blue lights and how we absolutely changed the way that park looks for so many months out of the year. Oh, and by the way, the blue lights are now lasting until after Patriot's Day. Because it occurred to us that all the people who come from around the world, you know, we've got these great lights, so let them see it. So now we have a, a, a formal end date. Um, so that's our project. Um, we're very excited, as I said, I've got uh, one other person who's on the quote-unquote committee with me, but our group is so energized that we'll wind up with a big committee, and, and none of us know what we're doing. Now, none of us have done this before, but none of us have done a lot of the stuff that we're doing, so we're figuring it out as we go along. Um, does anybody have any questions? Is the Marriott Corporation a fairly large contributor to your efforts? Oh, that's a good question. Is the Marriott a fairly large contributor? Um, yes, we hold our annual fundraiser there, and so this year, as I said, we had a casino night, so they give us um, a meal, which is a lovely buffet meal. The venue, um, in fact, this year we used two rooms. We used the palm room, we used the upstairs ballroom, um, all the service, and $39 a head is what they charge us. So it's a huge, deep discount. And then it occurred to us that there's a company that owns the building that the Marriott is housed in, and we've never gone after them. So with the help of the general manager, we have a new sponsorship, a corporate sponsor program. So I went after them, and we got $5,000 donated from Sunstone Investors. Um, and that will be used, part of it will be used to replace three trees that we lost because of Hurricane Sandy right at the edge of the park on Atlantic Avenue. I kind of approached it to them that way, so that they'll, they'll be paying for those trees. Um, their big, Tia's is very big. Um, uh, Carmela is very good. Uh, she's amazing, see all waterfront properties. Uh, the living room is good. And Joe Bono is amazing. He sponsors the Sunday night movies, if you've gone to the movies during the summer. So Joe Bono sponsors all of those. So there's a, a tremendous amount of support in the neighborhood. It's really wonderful. And it's going to get bigger because we've got this sponsorship program that we're, we've uh, structured what we've been doing, but now we're giving the sponsors more recognition for what they do. What about the chart house? The chart house never approached them. <coughs> so that's, and legal seafood, they don't do, they don't contribute. Yeah. So, so, you know, every corporation has its own. Uh, rules by which they will donate money and, and some things like perhaps the legal seafood has some kind of a charitable arm that we've not investigated. So that's the kind of thing we're starting to branch off now. We have a, a new uh, sponsorship uh, chair, uh, Sandra Harcourt, and she's wonderful. So she's looking into things that we just never thought to look into before. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much.